Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best Cold War Zombies loadouts you guys can take in, starting from level 4 and working all the way up to the Prestige 1. Jumping straight in with our level 4 loadout, we start with the Stoner 63 and the Frost Blast Specialist ability. Starting first with our primary weapon, the Stoner 63, we are working with a light machine gun. This meaning we'll get quite a lot of ammo to start off with. And with such a steady fire rate, there surprisingly really isn't that much recoil. And neither does it drain your ammo. If you're looking to wipe out zombies quickly with critical hits there really isn't much to worry about with the stoner as the recoil doesn't cause many problems at all. With no attachments however salvage does not come easy, therefore leaving you with not much salvage in order to create any armour to get you through the rounds. In terms of the frost blast specialist ability there really isn't that much to it. Depending on the size of the horde you're killing this thing does recharge pretty quickly however it isn't really that effective. Ultimately it just freezes zombies in place for a few seconds and does very minimal damage compared to the damage you deal with the stoner. Despite all this, the stoner does have its disadvantages, as obviously being an LMG, it's got a slow reload speed and a super slow running speed. The movement speed issue can obviously be solved with stamina, but if you're looking to save up points for Pack-a-Punch, this really isn't that convenient. Overall, however, I would say that the stoner is definitely a good weapon to go with, as the trade-off is definitely worth it for the extra bit of firepower, making it a lot more worthy than guns like the XM4, which while does have a quicker speed movement, does have a lot less firepower. However, the story for the the stoner does continue with Pack-a-Punch. Pack-a-Punching the stoner gives you a lot better firepower alongside additional damage to Megatons and Plague Hounds. Overall, the Pack-a-Punch stoner is a solid weapon that can take down hordes and get you through the early rounds, alongside dealing with Megatons until you can find a more sustainable weapon like the Gallo. As far as exfiltration goes, the stoner definitely held its own for a loadout weapon, taking me a total of 15 minutes to exfil on round 10. Next, coming in for our level 15 loadout, we have the Milano 821 accompanied by the Ether Shroud specialist ability. The Milano is a fully automatic submachine gun with a high damage for its weapon class, however a noticeably slower fire rate. While aiming down sights didn't seem to be the worst option, I found hip firing a lot more convenient. The Milano can hold its own against larger hordes, and the 32 rounds per mag definitely do not go to waste. Being an SMG, it has a super light movement speed alongside a fairly quick reload time. Unpack a punch, the Milano does rely on critical hits to deal real damage, and while being decent at taking out plague hounds, its pack a punch alternative is much better in comparison. With a larger magazine size of 60 bullets, the pack a punch Milano is very good at taking out larger hordes. To be specific, the training is made very easy with the pack a punched variant. As, once again being an SMG, the player is very agile and movement speed is very light. On the downside, Megatons are not the Milano's strong point. However, with its ability to take down large hordes at early rounds, it can definitely get you to the point where you can buy the Gallo, which is very effective at taking out the Megatons. Moving on to the specialist ability, we have E for Shroud. This is by far one of the best specialist abilities you can use, and depending on what tier you have, it grants you different advantages. At base tier, when activated, Ether Shroud will cause zombies to ignore you for 5 seconds. At tier 1, activating Ether Shroud will instantly reload ammo for your equipped weapon. At tier 2, the duration of the Ether Shroud is increased to 8 seconds compared to the previous 5. And at tier 3, activating Ether Shroud immediately warps you forward a small distance. To summarise, Ether Shroud is the ultimate field upgrade if you are playing solo. It hides you from enemies and when upgraded can be vital in any escapes you may need to make. Upgrading the Ether Shroud does become available later on, but it is definitely ha worth having when you can. Overall, the Pack-a-Punch Milano proves for a smooth exfiltration at round 10, coming in at 14 minutes and 17 seconds. And if you're not exfiltrating, then it can definitely carry you to the point where you can grab yourself a sustainable weapon for later rounds. Being drafted in for our level 25 loadout is the AK-74U. With the AK-74U also being an SMG, it shares very similar properties to the Milano A21, except this time it comes with a lot better firepower, along with a more SMG-like fire rate which gets you through the early rounds very quickly. Running through early round hordes is no problem for the AK-74U as seen here. It has a good hour mag size along with very little recoil, meaning you can get critical hits very easily. The only problem that comes alongside this is that with a more SMG-like fire rate, the ammo does deplete a lot quicker. Not too many problems are caused by this however, because of the ammo boxes around the map, ammo can be bought very cheaply for 250 essence. Against Plague Hounds, the non-Pack-a-Punch variant of the AK-74U holds up very well, and the Pack-a-Punch variant is absolutely 
absolutely incredible. As seen just now, Megatons are absolutely lasered by this thing, making the AK-74U definitely worth keeping and definitely worth pack-a-punching. A doubled ammo magazine size patches up all the problems we faced with the earlier variant, and with an increased firepower ensures a very smooth exfil, coming in at a solid 13 minutes and 4 seconds. Finally, for level 34 and onwards we have the Gallo. Starting with a Gallo saves you 2,000 points from a wall buy, and of course being a shotgun provides a very high high firepower. Range drop off doesn't seem to be a problem for the Gallo, and hitting critical hits doesn't seem to be a necessity. In larger hordes, the Unpack-a-Punch Gallo can definitely hold its own, however its reload speed does prove to be a slight problem. The animation however can be cancelled mid-reload, meaning you can fire bullets at your own will. When it comes to play counts, the Gallo does not slack at all, wiping out the majority of play counts on the round 7 play count round in one shot. Not to mention, the Gallo is very easy to move with, which proves to be very helpful for training hordes. The Pack-a-Punch variant to the Gallo, however, is a completely different breed, hitting enemies with a much higher firepower and also patching up the previous reload issues. Zombies at round 8 were still getting one shot by this absolute beast, and with a continued steady recoil and a light movement speed, it makes for an all-round fantastic weapon. Megatons proved to be no problem for the Gallo as the round 10 Megaton got taken out in about 19 shots. And to top it all off, the exfiltration went super smooth, coming in at 12 minutes and 50 seconds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure you smack the like button down below, and if you have any other recommendations for any certain level or any guns that you use, make sure you drop them in the comments and let me know, and I'll let you know what I think of them. And finally, if you haven't already, make sure you smash the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be notified on future guides for Deep Machina and Cold War Zombies. Thank you guys for watching, and until then, I will see you all next time. Peace out. Got my shorty on my side and I might just let her ride But I'm confused where we stand Am I your friend or your man? Yeah, it's cool what I do when I'm hanging with my crew But you're acting a fool and you fall with someone new